Thank you, Lauren, for the introduction and welcome everyone to the webinar on the electrification of Canadian urban bus transit. And just to give you a bit of background about uh, our institution, it's uh, the McMaster Institute for Transportation and Logistics. It was found, in, found by uh, Dr. Uh, Pavlos Canaroglu in 2009. And basically, we are working across different domains touching on transportation, logistics, as well as uh, electric mobility, our main focus in the last couple of years. Uh, this piece of research that I'm trying to present today stems from a, a large project which is funded by SHERC. It's called the Social Costs and Benefits of Electric Mobility in Canada. And basically, the project is trying to investigate the impact of electrification of mobility in Canada across nine different domains. So we do consumer analysis, electrification of fleet, transit, uh, geodemographic analysis of infrastructure, environmental assessment, infrastructure optimization, and economic impact. The project is almost at the midpoint now and is uh, scheduled to be finished on 2019, in September 2019. So my focus mainly on, on module three, which is the electrification of, uh, of bus transit. And today I will be presenting the first three steps that we took in order to assess the potential for transit electrification in Canada. So just before I, I go into the presentation, I just want to give an overview about transit, uh, bus transit service in Canada because there is a lot of uh, comparison between Canada and US. So in Canada, transit provides service to almost 23 million residents. We provide around 19 million passenger. Uh, we travel about 19 million uh, uh, kilometer traveled every year using around 5,000 different routes. Currently, we have 185 transit providers and almost zero market share of fully electric buses so far. When we look into the kind of structure of transit providers in Canada, we immediately notice that almost more than 40% uh, of Canadian transit providers operate with a fleet with less than 50 buses. And based on the Cute Effect book for uh, transit, uh, Canadian transit, uh, urban transit service, you can see that 42% of transit provider provide service in cities or, or municipalities with populations less than 50,000 inhabitants. So the, the key feature of Canadian bus transit that we operate in small cities. We provide service in, 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 fleet, in small fleet settings, but we travel way more kilometers compared to our neighbors in the states. So our main aim on, on this uh, project was to assess what is the possibility for the electrification of bus transit in Canada. And before we start, we kind of wanted to look into the first research focus and looking into can we map the technology, can we have an overview, what are the different features of electric buses in, in, in general and compare this with the diesel bus. The key reason or the key aim for this one is just to answer a very simple question. If we are comparing electric bus to diesel bus, are we comparing apple to apple or both technologies have completely different features and in order to implement electric bus, we need different tools to implement. So what we did in terms of research out outline, we did a comprehensive review of literature on electric buses. We reviewed six different powertrains, including the hybrid uh, and diesel and CNG and battery electric and fuel cell. And we based our review on four dominant features, the operational capability, greenhouse gas emission looking into uh, well to tank and tank to wheel emission, total cost of ownership, as well as energy consumption. And what we try to do is just use the diesel bus as our background and looking into different electric technology and see how they fit or how they match the diesel bus. So the first one we did with the, with the uh, and for, for this presentation, I'm focusing on the fuel cell and the battery electric. So as you can see in the fuel cell, you see immediately completely different kind of graph compared to the diesel. You see the purchase price is way higher than diesel. Maintenance cost as well is high. So the total cost of ownership is relatively higher compared to the diesel one. 
there is no range anxiety issue the fuel cell bus and the availability of bus which is defined as a ratio between charging time versus uh, range is very close to the diesel uh, but infrastructure uh, administration again and infrastructure cost contribute to a high cost of ownership in terms of greenhouse gas emission the fuel cell bus is really is really uh, environmentally friendly the well well to wheel greenhouse gas emission is way lower than the diesel counterpart and this is justified by the technology of the fuel cell especially if you're using the hydrogen fuel cell when we look into the battery electric and the first one i was testing was the overnight battery electric and just try to get the basis uh, for, for for the sake of our presentation the overnight electric bus concept is mainly the bus that charge overnight so it keep operating throughout the day and go uh, after they finish the operation schedule and charge for four to six hours and then be ready for operation next day while the opportunity electric bus is mainly on route charging it can be a medium sized battery or a very small battery and you charge with a DC fast charger charging and you basically have higher availability on route because the charging time is relatively smaller than the overnight. But both of them have with like features very high cost of ownership, uh, range anxiety issue, especially for uh, for uh, for the overnight bus is a is a big issue. The availability of of bus also is a major concern for uh, for uh, operation as well as the flexibility of, of operation. When we look into the opportunity electric bus, it's almost the same, but infrastructure costs contribute to increase total cost of ownership. But again, because you are paying less uh, cost for, for the bus, because you have lower battery uh, capacity, you will kind of reach total cost of ownership lower than the total cost of ownership for overnight bus. When you look into emission, it's the same as overnight. Range is very limited, but still, it's one of the key concepts that when you have a limited range, you have higher opportunity to charge in a fast charging uh, context and will give you higher availability uh, compared to overnight electric bus. But basically what we concluded out of this one is hybrid and CNG and the clean diesel bus will not achieve any substantial reduction in greenhouse gas emission. So if we are looking at the 12% of greenhouse gas emission contribution from the transit sector, only battery electric and fuel hydrogen fuel cell can contribute to uh, environment greenhouse gas emission reduction. The second uh, observation which also uh, came from analyzing the transit operation in Canada is that 72% of Canadian providers operate in fixed route. And the difference between fixed route and interlining is when we operate on fixed route, each bus is assigned to a specific uh, uh, route and you can easily predict the, the full day of operation from point A to point B. So the planning part for infrastructure installation and for energy consumption calculation and so on is very easy compared to the interlining. The interlining operation, the bus can operate across five or six different routes and therefore the especially as it relates to electric bus a battery electric bus it's very uh, hard to optimize the operation because you will reduce the flexibility for any bus to operate in a single route so we kind of having an opportunity here especially in Canada because 70 percent of operation represent like the majority of of transit providers as well as it's very easy to model and very easy to demonstrate for transit providers to convince them about the idea of uh, electric bus. The second key issue when we looked into the wheel to wheel greenhouse gas emission, and there was a very neat publication coming from uh, uh, Professor Kennedy at U of T, and he basically identified what is the threshold for electricity generation profile in order for electric uh, powertrain to be environmentally competitive with diesel. So he identified that if you have less than 600 ton uh, CO2 equivalent for every gigawatt electricity you produce, the uh, electric powertrain is more environmentally friendly than the diesel one. In Canada, overall, we operate now the electricity profile in Canada generate around 150 ton CO2 equivalent for every gigawatt hour electricity they produce. And for sure, we have some provincial variation between Quebec and, 
and Alberta, but overall, Canada is a very good environment to operate electric power trains. And the environmental benefits from operating electric power trains in Canada can really materialize it at micro level as well as at macro level. When we looked into the numbers and uh, data from current operation in China and Italy, we can conclude that electric buses are feasible for op operation, but we still have the high cost issue that may be hindered the application for electric buses. So the second question that after concluding this, this part of or this piece of research was looking into the decision making process. If we trying to understand how to optimize the operation of electric buses, we need to understand the decision making process and understanding the perspective of transit provider. So our second question immediately was what hindered the adoption of electric bus in Canadian transit and focusing on the decision making process from transit provider perspectives. So what we did, we shift into more qualitative uh, type of research investigations. We used uh, semi-structured uh, interviews with 11 transit managers representing uh, over 60% of Canadian transit ridership. And the key idea was looking into what, how we can bridge the gap between academic research and daily operation. When we looked into the literature, there was almost no publication or no piece of research that had been done before looking into the electrification of transit from the transit provider uh, perspectives. And we, are, we focused mainly on the operational barriers as well as the decision-making uh, process and how they tie uh, together. In terms of our participants, we, we focused on uh, including every category in transit providers uh, in our sample. So we, we kind of went to the uh, big metropolitan uh, provider like TTC and STM and we went for small providers as King's Transit and Kenville just to make sure that we are representing all different perspectives in our research. And on a personal level, I think this piece of, of, of research was really comprehensive and advanced our research to the third and fourth stages that I will explain later on. So basically, in, in qualitative research, you are trying to identify some themes that emerged from the interview. And we managed, based on our data analysis, to identify four main factors that govern the implementation of, uh, of electric bus transit in Canadian uh, transit context. And each of the four factors were uh, sub, the, we had subcategories, 16 different subcategories, and 55 different themes. And the 55 themes of kind of representing the uh, stakeholder, oh, sorry, tra transit provider perspectives about uh, implementation of electric bus transit. The first one was the attitude toward electric bus, and it was a very simple question. We tried to ask the transit provider, what do you think about electric bus? Can you see electric bus implemented in your, uh, in your uh, operation? And why uh, uh, it, it's good or bad to implement electric bus in your operation? The first one, the first response was the guinea pig syndrome. No one in, in, in any of the 11 transit providers that we interviewed agreed to be the first kid in the block with, with the new technology. Everyone was repeating the same notion about give me some operational data that took place in Canada and let me analyze the operational data and then I can be, uh, cons I can consider implementing electric bus. Uh, all of them focused more on technology anxiety compared to range anxiety. And the, the, the key concept was transit will keep uh, the bus for around 12 years. They will do six, six years refurbish, but usually you keep it for 10 to 12 years. So within 12 years uh, uh, time span, you can easily be obsolete with technology. If anyone can ask himself what was his mobile phone, what was the model of his mobile phone, 12 years ago would be like very basic mobile phone. So the technology advanced very quickly and they had some sound concerns about can you keep us current with the technology advancement over the course of 12 years. They expressed a lot of concerns as well about risk and safety dealing with high voltage, especially with the opportunity electric bus and as well as the lack of Canadian operational data. We provided some operational data during the interview for uh, operation that 
currently taking place on, on, in the U.S., some demonstration projects taking place in the U.S., but all of them rejected the U.S. data and they said, give me some Canadian operation data, how the temperature will impact uh, the, the status of charge of the battery, uh, what is the availability on a, on a regular uh, operational week for every bus, and this was repeated throughout the interview. So basically, uh, in terms of general attitude, there is a, a, a firm belief that electric buses are the way forward, but there is some very valid concerns about implementing electric bus, mainly could be seen about risk averse attitude, they don't want to tinker with new technology, they, they, they basically they don't have enough data to make an informative decision, and they had some sound technological concerns about implementing electric bus. The second theme was focusing on the operational feasibility. So when you are selecting new technology, when you are selecting diesel versus uh, uh, CNG or, or electric uh, bus, what are the dominant factors that will inform you in your decision-making process? And the first one was network optimization. They, they all the current practice and transit provider that they already optimized their operation based on the parameters of diesel or CNG buses. So if we are to implement electric buses in Canadian uh, transit context, either we need to rethink the optimization algorithm to fit the electric bus or to provide electric bus with the technology that match uh, diesel uh, uh, capability in terms of range and in terms of charging time. So this was the, the, the main concern. The second one was obviously the total cost of ownership, how to most of the transit providers said that they don't have enough money to pay the high uh, capital cost at the start to operate an uh, uh, electric uh, bus, and they don't have enough human resource, uh, train the human resource, especially mechanics, to maintain and, <coughs> and uh, uh, operate electric buses. They mentioned the issue about availability, what is the availability ratio for electric buses versus uh, diesel bus, and again, this will tie into network optimization, and the big issue about developing common standards. Uh, I, I remember some of the comments about we basically refuel diesel bus using the same nozzle, but every electric bus will come with a different plug. So if you implement, if you select one technology, you kind of getting married to this technology for a very long time because you develop all your infrastructure and all your equipments based on a certain technology. So they mentioned all of them that without developing a common standards for electric buses, there is, it's very hard for them to go for the procurement process and to be mainly isolated with only single uh, uh, providers. And the, the main feature of the operation was about like if we're getting 22 hours of operation from uh, on a single day, can you provide us with technology similar to this? Or do we need to rework our network optimization algorithm to fit the new technology? So the first was mainly the, the, the key barrier for them to switch because they already optimized the operation and they believe that the optimization is, is fitting their needs and providing them was very, very comprehensive approach to uh, deliver the service. The third theme was the decision-making process. So, um, how you do you have any specific components in the decision-making process and the fleet management process that will force or encourage or or help the adoption of electric buses? And the answer was no. There is no policy in place to support the electrification of transit in almost all. Uh, a transit provider that we interviewed, except one of them, and mainly the key issue was uh, the risk averse decision making. We don't want to take major risks, again, building from previous comments about technology anxiety, about standards, about network optimization, was mainly we don't want to take any risk with our operation, because this might hurt the reliability of our service, and we lose ridership. The second part was the U.S. market influence, and they said that most of the technology are designed for the U.S. market. We have no knowledge whatsoever about temperature impact on battery technology, how we can deal with the, with the, with the with sudden 
uh, change in temperature and how this might uh, impact our operation, what are the range limitation in winter versus summer. So all these kind of questions kind of uh, really hindering the decision making uh, decision making process about implementing uh, electric bus. The issue about developing common standards for electric bus was mainly featured in, in, featured in the procurement process where they said like we need to entertain every single option we have and this is why we don't even include electric buses in our uh, procurement pro uh, process because we know about uh, uh, the unique uh, administration and infrastructure requirement for every single technology. So if, you, if you're shopping for BYD for instance, you kind of getting with BYD for a long time and it will be very expensive to convert to a new flyer or Nova or Portera or whatever. But if you are operating diesel, you can mix and match from different uh, uh, manufacturers because basically they, each bus will give you the same uh, operation parameters. And it was kind of surprising for us because initially we thought that because we, we, we have so many hybrid buses operating in, 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 in transit fleets in, across Canada, and we thought that the hybrid is kind of a stepping stone for full electrification, but most of them consider the hybrid is a way to provide some cost reduction and operation cost. One of the main uh, uh, issues that was featured during the interview was about uh, the misleading information about trying to sell electric bus on the merit of cost reduction. They mentioned that 20% of the operation cost is allocated to uh, fuel consumption, and uh, infrastructure cost, while almost 80% or a little bit lower than 80% is allocated for human resources. So if you provide an electric bus that will operate one more hour in your fleet, it means that you will have additional driving driver hours in, in, in your cost. And this was rejected by every single operators that we interviewed. They say, we, we don't mind some of them said that we don't mind paying the uh, higher capital cost, but if you can provide us with the same fleet size, uh, same operation hour, we can think about electric bus. But once you increase operation hours or you increase driver hours, it kind of becoming additional financial burden on transit providers to support the salary and wages for drivers uh, and mechanics. When we finally we try to ask them what will be the optimal business case to implement electric uh, electric bus in, in Canada, and all of them agreed that we need a top-down approach supported by the federal government in terms of uh, mitigating the higher initial cost. Uh, they needed full Canadian uh, network data bank, gave us some demonstration projects over a full transit network, not only one corridor and make the data uh, available and public for, for everyone. Let us speak with the people that operated the demonstration project. Let us audit and review their data. And this can help us to make some informative uh, uh, decision. And also they say like if we have some political interventions in terms of financial support or incentives to operate uh, electric buses in our transit. So mainly this would the, like the four main factor that we, we investigated in our research and we try to come with like an overall perspective of transit providers in relation to electrification of bus transit in Canada. And basically it was grounded on three pillars, risk, operation, constraints and cost. And as you can see across the three domains and you can see the attitude and the operational feasibility and decision making, it's kind of all about risk uh, uh, mitigation and trying to uh, remove the risk from the decision making process as much as they can. Some call it risk free decision making process because they're dealing with taxpayer money. So basically they will not step in into the new technology without having a full uh, risk analysis which means that they have access to all sorts of, of demonstration data and uh, uh, trial project that took place in Canada before making an informative decision. In terms of operation, they focused on, on the flexibility of electric bus. If we have limited operational flexibility, how this might impact the optimization of our uh, network. They already, the networks uh, already optimized for diesel and CNG. So again, rethinking all the optimization models and how this might impact 
uh, driving uh, drivers hours or increased number of mechanics or increased number of, of labors which will add additional financial burden into the, the service providers. They have a high perception that electric bus will cost them more especially for the overnight uh, for the opportunity electric bus because of increased hydro rates during peak hour because of time of use or peak demand and also they some of them expressed very limited financial capability to even afford uh, uh, buying electric bus in their operation and in terms of, of uh, again developing a feasible business case they emphasized that they need to mitigate the risk by providing some operational data that took place in Canada on a full network level and I keep repeating full network level because when we uh, uh, shared with them some of the operation, some of the demonstration uh, trials that took place in Canada, they kind of say it's very easy to try a bus on a, a, a single route based uh, uh, trial, but this will give you misleading information because you will not be able to account for the cumulative impact when you operate multiple buses at the same network. They emphasize that the federal uh, uh, support is, is, is th through some monetary incentives is required in order to support the implementation of electric buses in Canada. So we kind of took the 55 different themes on the, that's currently in a very small text on your on the right side of the screen and the four main uh, categories: attitude toward the electric bus, operational feasibility, decision-making process, and business case, and trying to uh, on the left side, you can see that this is our proposed intervention. How you can inform each of the 55 uh, themes through four major steps. The one is the, ver the very first one is R&D and developing common standards. The second one is political support and demonstration project on a full network and the Canadian data bank. So for the first two, the R&D and political support, basically we can do nothing in terms of research to inform this process. But we said in terms of demonstration on a full network, we can easily demonstrate, at least simulate the demonstration project on a, full, uh, on a full network level and investigate how a full network versus a single corridor might uh, uh, inform us with different uh, indications about the electrification of, uh, of buses. And we kind of trying to link how each component from the proposed interventions will answer some of the uh, themes that we kind of investigated through our discussion. So in terms of finding, uh, we concluded that almost all of them agreed that electric buses currently with the current technology are operationally uh, capable, but they have very sound concerns about the electrification of bus transit in terms of network optimization cost, as well as uh, uh, not hurting the reliability of the service and they emphasized that the feasible business case should be developed and the information should be shared with every single transit provider before the implementation uh, took place in, in, in a different context. And all of them identified small to medium-sized cities with fixed route network as the ideal place to test a full network uh, uh, demonstration project. So basically the first step was teaching us about the technology the second step was mainly teaching us about the decision-making process, which uh, logically led into the third step, which is uh, our research focus, focus three, the simulation of electric uh, transit on a full network. And we looked into both operational feasibility and utility impact analysis. So basically what we did, we instead of stretching our uh, simulation model uh, based on, on assumptions, we translated the interview discussions into model constraints. So basically, we focused on real-world data and full network analysis using current existing timetables and maintaining fleet size. So when they ex expressed some concerns about increasing fleet size, size, we didn't allow our simulation model to increase fleet size. And we didn't uh, temper with any uh, of the operational schedule and timetables and we investigated the full network uh, level instead of single corridor. 
The second constraint that we implemented that we will use only Altoona tested buses, current technology that is currently tested and certified through the uh, Altoona test center. And we focused on three different technologies, the BYD, the overnight BYD, the new flyer, which is a mid-range uh, opportunity similar to the one uh, currently uh, demonstrated in Winnipeg, and the uh, Portera, which is, we call it flash opportunity because it charge uh, uh, very often compared to the new flight. And basically what we did, we developed five different simulation scenarios using different charging capability, also to test how the charging, number of chargers and the charger, charger power might impact uh, uh, our simulation. And as they recommended, we focused on small cities and fixed route operation, which again represent 42% of bus transit operators in Canada. And this was our simulation uh, model. The, the, the dashed line focus about creating priority of a charge when the bus is required to charge and what the priority using three different levels. And again, this, the, the right side of the simulation is basically calculating the status of charge after uh, uh, exiting the charging station and as well as after completing the assigned route. So basically, in terms of operation constraint, same fleet size, same timetable, minimizing number of chargers because we, one of our research questions was mainly about what is the minimum requirement for infrastructure deployment and using, again, currently available technology. And we tested this on, on a full network in Belleville uh, City, Ontario, I kind of getting to the midday operation. And basically, this is a special temporal uh, a simulation uh, model. Uh, taking the data, the operation data from uh, uh, Belleville Transit and assigning, changing the technology from diesel into electric bus. This represents one of the five different scenarios and as you can see, you can see on, on the lower left side uh, the charger data which is basically just the charging station and in this scenario we had the minimum number of chargers is just three chargers and at any given instant of time t, you can see which bus is allocated to which charger. You can see the status of charge in kilowatt hour for every bus, the number of charges that each bus will, will do throughout the day, number of uh, completed trips, and the traveled, total traveled kilometer throughout the day. Why this simulation is very important? Because it can give you a lot of information about energy consumption, about frequency of, of uh, uh, hitting the charging station and also the char the status of charge for every bus. So we, we kind of getting the information from the simulation model and you can see that this network operates using 13 different buses and for each given scenario from scenario 1A to 3B you can see bus 1 for every given scenario how many times the bus went to the charging station. And again you can see the status of charge for, for uh, any single bus throughout the day and also you can understand as well the energy demand over time. And this was a more an extent of what we learned from the interview because basically we, when you're dealing with electric mobility there is not two components. There is the electric grid component and there is the transportation component. So we kind of trying to investigate both of them at the same time. So when you look at the uh, flash electric bus the, the simulation gave us the minimum required number of, uh, of chargers to be five at a capacity of 250 kilowatt. But when you look at energy demand over time, you can see that at some, uh, like starting from 9.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m., you can see that it's almost 1,200 uh, kilowatt required for five minutes, which is substantial in terms of uh, uh, impacting the distribution grid. Again, when we increased the, uh, cap the charger capacity to 500, we kind of required only three chargers to satisfy our operation, but the power demand over time increased to be 1500 kilowatt hour. When we look, and uh, in contrast to the flash opportunity, when, when we look into the overnight uh, electric bus, we see that we need only three chargers at the capacity of eight, 80 kilowatt hour each, and the uh, uh, energy demand over time didn't exceed the 250 
kilowatt when we increase the charger capacity to 200 kilowatt hour kind of slightly hitting the 500 or half megawatt hour demand over time. So we took the energy demand data and we kind of try to analyze the utility impact focusing on the uh, uh, voltage quality and the tap settings and again we we can see from the flash electric uh, bus up to the overnight electric bus and it's easily expected that the flash electric will have higher impact on uh, on the utility grid compared to the overnight but again when we look into the our finding it's kind of surprising because from the transit uh, operation perspective the flash opportunity bus was superior compared to any other bus because the availability ratio for the bus was really high as well as you can charge for uh, every uh, uh, other trip and you can satisfy the operation for up to, uh, to 19 hours which was the operation for Belleville City. But from utility perspective we calculated that if you are to operate an opportunity or flash electric bus you require a transformer which is six five to six times of the size required for overnight operation so from the utility perspective the overnight might represent uh, less impact on on the distribution grid compared to the overnight and this finding in itself is very significant because it's obvious that we will need a trade-off between uh, transit operation and utility impact analysis. And basically, this is our current stage uh, in research, trying to uh, answer some, several, not some, several unanswered questions about the electrification of transit. The first one, which was kind of surprising, when we look into the BYD operated 324 kilowatt hour battery, and a new flyer have the 200 kilowatt hour battery, who's advising these numbers? And can we fit the battery size to operate in every single network in Canada, given the varied operational context and the unique characteristics of each city? So our question would be, what is the optimum configuration for electric bus? What is the optimum battery size, charger capacity, and number of chargers? Because for sure, the optimum number for every single transit provider will be different. So if we are to optimize the operation of electric bus, we need to optimize the configuration of electric bus and not buying ready uh, 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 technology that is already predefined about the, the uh, battery capacity and the charging uh, power. The second one was if we constrain the, the impact on utility, can we still satisfy the transit operation to what extent if we constrain one end of, of our uh, models, if we constrain transit operation, we saw that we will have severe impact on the utility grid. But if we looked from the other perspective, if we constrain the utility impact and we say, you will not be allowed to take more than 1500 kilowatt hour for any given time for your transit operation, how this might impact our transit operation? Can we see increased number of uh, increased fleet size? Can we see uh, more over overhead time or recovery time to charge the buses at a lower rate. Again, it's still an answered uh, question. And the one which is unique and specific for every transit network about what are the network attributes in terms of uh, uh, overhead time, operation hours, uh, average length of, of transit routes, uh, fleet size, all these components will contribute into the uh, configuration of the electric uh, uh, bus in general and more specifically on the charging profile. So if you have longer routes in your, in your network, it's more uh, the probability of charging will increase compared to if you have shorter routes. So what kind of formula or, 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 uh, or relationship between network specific characteristics and uh, the uh, implementation of, of electric buses and basically our current uh, research effort is trying, is trying to answer the three questions together. We are looking into uh, not only simulating, but we are looking into optimizing transit, uh, electric transit configuration over 74 different networks in Canada and using the transit network uh, specific attributes to identify the relationship between the context attributes and 
the optimized uh, solution in order to identify which one, which factor is significantly impacting our electric transit operation. So this is where we stand right now and uh, hopefully I didn't exceed the time and thank you and